Hello friends, welcome to Pride Academy. In today's session, we will be discussing the energetics of uh, glycolysis and TCO cycle. This is coming under the second semester biochemistry topic, so let's get on to the topic here. The one molecule of glucose, when it undergoes uh, glycolysis as well as when it enters the TCO cycle, what is the final output of the energetics? Or what is the energy gain, net energy gain? That's what called as energetics. So that is what we will be discussing here. So one molecule of glucose, when it undergoes a uh, glycolytic pathway, you know, it undergoes through different steps. Uh, we can classify it into three main categories. One is the ATP utilization phase. Second is the splitting phase. And then we have the ATP generation phase. So glycolytic pathway is basically consisting of three uh, parts. One is the utilization phase of ATP. Second, as we said, is a spreading phase, and the third one is a generation phase. So, in uh, the utilization, utilization phase, there are two different places where the ATP gets converted to the ADP, right? So, we can see that here when the glucose gets converted to glucose 6 phosphate, there is one ATP being utilized, and we get ADP. Right? So the ATP is being utilized here. That means one ATP is utilized to form uh, glucose 6-phosphate. And in the second reaction, we can find that the fructose 6-phosphate, it get converted to fructose 1,6 by phosphate. Again, here also you can find that one ATP is being utilized and it provides inorganic phosphate which then converts a fructose 6-phosphate to the fructose 1, 6 by phosphate, correct? So two molecules of ATP is consumed here. So we will have to reduce two ATPs, one from here, the other from this position, correct? Because the ATP is being consumed or used to form a different product. Next is a splitting phase, and there uh, we get the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and 1, 3. Uh, hydroxy dihydroxy acetone phosphate dihydroxy acetone phosphate so we get the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and then there is a dihydroxy acetone phosphate the most important part is that we need to understand both glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate are isomers which means they are uh, structurally very similar but uh, they have the same molecular formula they have a few difference in their structural arrangement correct so that is why it's called as an isomer. It, it has an importance in uh, glycolysis because glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate once uh, it undergoes a whole conversion and finally it forms a pyruvate, right? So that is the end point of the glycolysis. So once the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate completes that formation into the pyruvate, once that is exhausted, we know that dihydroxyacetone phosphate can get converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and again it will undergo a second uh, run right and finally we get the pyruvate so it means that this cycle is going to repeat two times so whatever the energy that we are going to get here we need to multiply it by two right why because glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate once it runs that uh, uh, runs and complete a final formation of pyruvate the same thing can repeat once again. Why? Because the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can again get converted to the um, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Again, that cycle is going to repeat. So, two times it is going to repeat. That is why we have to multiply all the energy molecules that we are getting into two. So, let's see how many energy molecules we can uh, get when the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is getting converted to the pyruvate, right? So let's see the positions here. So once glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate gets converted to 1, 3 by phosphoglycerate, you can see that one molecule of NADH is formed, which is an energy molecule, right? And then 1, 3 by phosphate gets converted to 3 phosphoglycerate. Again, you can find that there is a formation of ATP. The energy molecule is being formed here. And the third place is when pyruvate. Uh, phosphoenol pyruvate gets converted to the pyruvate. Again, here you will find that there is an ATP formation, right? So we got three places where there is an energy molecules being formed. One, it is in the form of NADH. 
and then we have an ATP formation and then again an ATP formation right so one molecule of NAD is formed NADH is formed and two molecules of ATP is formed here so what is the significance is that we need to multiply it with two we have already discussed why we need to multiply it with two because uh, one glycerol g 3 phosphate undergoes that conversion into pyruvate then dihydroxy acetone phosphate gets converted to glycerol g 3 phosphate which can repeat the same steps and it is going to give you the pyruvate right so this is the second time it's going to repeat that that is the reason why we are multiplying it with two right so we have the final product here the pyruvate that is the end product of glycolysis and uh, next we need to understand what as per the old calculation and as per the new calculation what is the amount of ATP that one molecule of NADH2 can give NADH can give and similarly FADH2 can give right so one molecule of NADH as per old calculation it is equivalent to three molecules of ATP but in the new calculation a 0.5 has reduced so now the new calculation says that one molecule of NADH is equivalent to 2.5 ATP. So we'll be using this uh, value to calculate uh, in this energetics. Okay. And for FADH2, the old calculation says that it's equivalent to two molecules of ATP. But as per the new calculation, the accepted is 1.5 ATP. So again, we'll be using this for the new uh, for understanding the energetics of both glycolysis as well as the T, uh, TCA cycle. So glycolysis, we know that there are different phases. First phase is the utilization phase. As we have discussed, two molecules of ATP is being utilized there. Right, It's being consumed. And then in the generation phase, we understood that the uh, formation of an NADH, that is one, and two molecules of ATP is being formed in two different places. But we need to multiply it with two. Why? Because there is two times the formation of pyruvate. That is the reason why we have to multiply it with two. Right? And as you can see here, one molecule of NADH2 is equivalent to 2.5 molecules of uh, ATP. It's an equivalent to 2.5 molecules as per the new calculation. And, uh, and two molecules of ATP is being formed, right? So when you calculate it, we can understand that the final value will be 22.5, which is 5, and 2 into 2 molecules of ATP, that will give you 4 ATP. So that sum is giving you 9 molecules of ATP. But we know that out of the 9 molecules, 2 is being consumed in the utilization phase. So the net ATP gain in glycolysis is going to be 7 ATP molecule. Okay, and uh, then we'll know that the pyruvate which is formed in the TCA in the glycolysis is going to move on to the next cycle, which is a TCA cycle, or we call it as a citric acid cycle, or also known as a Krebs cycle. So two molecules of pyruvate is going to enter into this uh, cycle, and it's going to have it's going to undergo different changes, right? So we will uh, first uh, understand when the pyruvate forms into acetyl coenzyme A, there is a formation of a NADH. Okay, and then it moves into the cycle, which is a TCA cycle, where the conversions happen, where first the oxaloacetate is going to combine with acetyl CoA, and uh, it moves forward through the cycle. So we'll just see where uh, the energy molecules are formed. First, we discussed when the pyruvate is uh, getting converted to acetyl CoA, there is a formation of NADH. And next, when isocitrate forms oxalosuccinate, you can see there is again a formation of NADH. Correct? That is within the TCA cycle, that is the first NADH formed. After that, when the alpha ketoglutarate is getting converted to succinyl CoA, there you can find an NADH base being formed. That is a second NADH. And when succinyl uh, CoA is getting converted to succinate, there is a formation of GTP. 
which is actually equivalent to 1 ATP. So 1 GTP is equivalent to 1 ATP. So next, when the succinate is getting converted to fumarate, you will find that there is a formation of FADH2. And finally, when the malate is getting converted to oxaloacetate, again, we'll find there is a formation of NADH. So what did the NADH, which all steps to the NADH formed, or how much did we get? When you take the NADH case, pyruvate when it is getting converted to acetyl CoA, we have the formation of NADH. Then within the cycle, there are three places when where the NADH is being formed, right? Other than that, there is a formation of GTP in one place and FADH2 in another place. So let's look into the energetics of the TCA cycle. As we have discussed in the beginning, there is two molecules of pyruvate being formed and both those fire weight is going to enter into the TCA cycle, right? So we have to take uh, this into a consideration when we are calculating the energetics. So we have to consider that there is two times the cycle is going to repeat. Therefore, we have to multiply every energy molecules that we are getting into two. Only then we will get the actual value, correct? So two times the fire weight is getting into the TCA cycle. It's repeating two times. So when we uh, see that when the pyruvate is getting converted to acetyl-CoA, there is a formation of one molecule of NADH. But we know that the cycle is going to repeat twice, so we multiply it with 2 and we will get 2 molecules of NADH. And uh, as per the new calculation, 1 NADH is equal to 2.5 ATP. So 2 times when it is repeating, we know that the final value is going to be 5 ATP when the pyruvate is getting converted to acetyl CoA. Within the cycle, so when we look at the cycle, we know that uh, there are different places where there is a formation of uh, NADH, FADH2 and GTP, right? So one GTP is being formed, which as we discussed is equivalent to one ATP molecule. So we have mentioned it there. And we have seen three different places within the cycle where there is a formation of NADH. We have mentioned that. And then there is a formation of one molecule of FADH2, correct? But as you can see here, we have to multiply it with two. Why? Because we have two molecules of pyruvate being formed in the glycolysis, which then enters into the TCA cycle, right? So we have to multiply it with two, which will give us two molecules of ATP here and then we'll, uh, we'll get 3 into 2 that is 6 molecules of NADH2 here and 2 molecules of FADH2, correct? Then we can go into the calculation. ATP is just 2 molecules of ATP. You don't have to do any conversion but in the case of NADH, 6 into 2.5 as per the new calculation, correct? So that is going to give you how much? 15 molecules of ATP, right? So there is six molecules of NADH that is formed within the cycle. We have to multiply it with 2.5 and that is going to give you 15 molecules of ATP. Similarly, when we take the FADH2, we know that as per the new calculation, this is 1.5, right? So 2 into 1.5, that is going to give you 3. So if you get uh, take the total of this, it is going to give you 20 molecules of ATP within the cycle and then when the pyruvate is getting converted to acetyl-CoA we have the formation of 5 molecules of ATP. Okay. What about the glycolytic pathway? We know that net gain in the glycolytic pathway was how much? It was 7 ATP right? that we have already calculated. So taking into consideration all this when we sum up the whole uh, one molecule of gl glucose getting converted to uh, pyruvate, then it is entering, entering into the glycolytic uh, TCA cycle. So when we take the sum total of all those uh, pathways, we can understand the total output of ATP is 32, correct? Right, so we get 32 ATP. But there is a small uh, clarification. Why? Because we need to use two ATPs for the transportation of an NADH. Why does it happen or where does it happen? So we need to understand where the glycolysis is going to happen, right? 
then only we will be able to understand why 2 ATP is being utilized for the transportation of NADH. As we can understand that within the cell, so this is a cell, so there is a cytosol where the glycolysis is happening, right? So cytosol is uh, uh, the matrix part uh, and then we have the mitochondria. So in the cytosol, uh, we have this glycolysis happening and finally we'll get the pyruvate and during this process we'll get the NADH, right? We'll get two molecules of NADH. For the transportation of NADH into the mitochondria where uh, there is the ETC or the electron transport chain which is actually converting the NADH into the energy molecule which is the energy currency ATP, right? Within the mitochondria. For converting this, it has to enter into the mitochondria. The NADH has to enter into the mitochondria. But this happens uh, with an expense. Okay, that is two molecules of ATP. Only if we give two molecules of ATP, the NADH is going to get transported into the mitochondria where it enters the ETC, that is electron transport chain, and will get the ATP molecule. For this, two molecules of ATP is being utilized. So the net gain is not going to be 32. We have to subtract it from the 32 ATP. Why? Because we told, we understood that the TCA cycle as well as the ETC is going to happen within the mitochondria. So from the cytosol, after uh, the glycolysis is over, uh, we get ATP as well as NADH. And this NADH has to enter into the mitochondria where it gets converted into the ATP, right? Into the ATP. So for this, we have to uh, give two molecules of ATP which means that uh, ATP is being utilized or another two molecules of ATP is being consumed. That is the reason why we are subtracting two molecules of ATP from 32 and that is going to give you a net ATP gain of 30 molecules, ATP molecules. So what is a net ATP gain after uh, a molecule of glucose enters into the glycolysis and TCA cycle? It is 30 ATP energy molecules. So this is the calculation how it goes. Uh, thanks for watching P Bright Academy. Have a great day.